What's a harsh truth you have for the opposite sex? Just cause you make him hard doesn't mean you're all that special. A guy can get hard from, as I've heard someone on this site say, a stiff breeze and eye contact. And being good in bed does not mean just getting a guy off. We all get off pretty regularly. Like, we've been doing that since age 13, earlier for some. Want to know what your guy really likes in bed would love to do? Ask him. Guys need to do this for their partners, too. Everyone's different in bed and assuming you're doing what they want without ever asking is a sure way to frustrate both parties in a short time. If you do online dating and you're very overweight and you skillfully hide that fact in your photos. You're setting yourself up for disappointment and awkwardness. Ask a friend who's good with a camera to take a photo of you where you look good but also like yourself. Of course that goes for both zes. Don't misrepresent yourself. Do you really want your date to think that's not even close to what I saw in those photos? Edit, yes, Mr. Nand. Not everyone who does online dating is overweight. Also in case that wasn't obvious, being overweight doesn't mean nobody will like you. But you definitely only want to attract those who like that or don't mind. Edit 2. We should generalize this to present yourself well to the people who would be into you, don't lie to those who are looking for someone else. It's not limited to women or weight, and it has nothing to do with whether being overweight is I or not. My wife brought home a book once for like an 4050 lit class that summed up everything wrong with almost every relationship I've had and half I've seen. I don't remember the name of the book, but it's about a young black woman post-civil war, and her personal and exile awakening. She married a successful man she wasn't into because they made a handsome couple. Her mom drops by. I'll paraphrase in the style of the author. Mom. Why is you sitting while your water ain't drawn and your stove wood ain't cut? Katie, oh, mama, Eugene treats me so good, I hardly have to lift a finger around here. He comes home from the store and he'll cut the wood and haul the water, and sometimes he even do the cooking. Mom, and does you love him good at night? Katie shrugs. Mom, long pause you is the dumbest child God ever give me to raise. Katie, why, what do you mean, mama? Mom, that man should be kissing your mouth, and he kissing your foot. And a man stay down and kiss your foot long enough, you can't help but look down on him. But, come someday, he gonna look up, and see you looking down on him, and you ain't never gonna have another happy day. Their eyes were watching God's or Neil Hurston. There's a lot of things we don't understand about you, and need to have explained to us. Please don't assume we should already know them from being alive. An apology has three parts. Saying you're sorry. Acknowledging what you did wrong. Explaining how you intend to make things right and doing just that. If you're constantly going to play hard to get, we're eventually going to give up. Do not wait until I am in bed and ready for sleep before starting an emotionally intense conversation. It will not go well. Edit, yes, I intentionally left the genders out. This applies to both. Neither side has a monopoly on this. I suppose it should be a harsh truth for your partner. But it's a harsh truth because it's such a bad thing to do the person trying to sleep will usually say something nasty and mean because they're not really awake and because they are being trapped and pounced on when they're the most vulnerable. Seriously, people, don't do this. It's destructive to your relationship and to you. Frick, I take mine back and say this one. Any other moment in the day when I wasn't trying to sleep was perfect for this conversation, but I have to work at 6am. I shouldn't be able to smell you before I see you. Whether this is perfume, Axe what of earth a frick or straight up stank. Tone it down or take a GD bath. Especially if you work in an office. I believe Axe is the greatest invention for women. We can smell doucher bags coming a mile away. I'm not always going to know when to make the next move. 
why can't you do it if you know, since I don't. Moreover, I'm extremely patient. I can't wait for you to be ready. But when you say you're ready, please be freaking ready. I seriously want to go mini golfing with you. Don't toy with me like that. Edit, holy sh I was not expecting this kind of response. I mostly meant the mini golf thing as cutesy sort of joke type thing to detract from the seriousness of the above line. I mean, I love mini golf. And it's something I wanna do with her. But really this isn't supposed to be sad or invoke any actual emotion. Everything's cool. Trust me. Your ex doesn't want to get back together. Way to aim for the jugular you be. That no one of us is a spokesperson for the entire gender. Writing there's no way I could write a short summary of myself in a dating profile does not make you appear a mysterious, worldly polymath. It shows that you either are not willing to make the effort, or are incapable of analyzing and distilling the essence of a complex subject. When you say, Jack makes me an angry drunk, tequila makes me a crazy drunk and vodka makes me a sty drunk you're actually just a drunk who uses alcohol to explain your shti behavior. Can be for either x. PM I me pictures of you naked will not make me like you. Edit, wow, lot of guys have a D pic ready for comments like this. What if I send you naked pictures of my dog? He's always naked, he is a freaking weirdo. Edit, since so many people asked here he is naked, apologies for the filter I wasn't the one taking him on the walk. Edit to all right here he is without the bandana, didn't know that somehow counts as clothing. Better? He only has a collar on. I can't fix your insecurities. Only you can do that. Would work for either XTBH. I would actually say that you can fix someone's insecurities, just not in a hey, let me just fix that right up for you a. Example, I had a girlfriend, who was really really shy, and uncomfortable showing herself, and being naked especially. I loved her with all my heart, giving her tons of compliments, and massive amounts of affection every day. I made her feel valued, appreciated, wanted. Therefore, after some time, she was totally comfortable going out in public, started wearing clothes she liked instead of clothing she could hide in, and she could be naked with me without being embarrassed. This was a result of love, affection and a lot of time, but even after we broke up, she's a completely changed person, and I think I actually helped her overcome her insecurities, even though I wasn't actively trying to fix it. But I agree with your sentiment. The change comes from within. Edit, wow, thanks for the replies and messages. I'm not some kind of DR. Hitch love doctor, I was just being genuine towards a girl I cared deeply about, that's about it. I don't think you can fix other people, but I think that the song that echoes my sentiment the most, is the song Fix You by Coldplay. The change will come from within, but I'll be damned if I don't try to make you realize your true potential, how happy you could be in your own person, because you are amazing. To the people asking what happened after, was that we was in a great relationship, best I ever had, but I screwed it up in search of something better. We still see each other from time to time, and sometimes it gets passionate, but I don't think it's me and her as I'm a very weird person. But that's another story colon thanks for the input guys. A little bit of empathy goes a long day. Please do not dismiss us when we tell you about our fears and securities problems, even if it is hard for you to relate to. Edit, Grandma. A lot of guys have lower physical standards for a casual hookup than they do for a relationship. There are women I know who would alter their dating behaviors drastically if they understood this. Edit, lots of people are asking how they would alter their behavior. They wouldn't hook up with guys in hopes of getting into a relationship with them. It's easier to get attention from guys if you not so subtly put X on the table, but the fallacy is that this attention necessarily indicates possible interest in a relationship. I'm not saying that putting out too early turns guys off, 
Just that statistically, more guys will want to have X with you than want to date you seriously. So if a one night stand is going to leave you feeling burned, you should wait a few dates. The standards drop even lower depending on the combination of how bad you want to get it and if any of your friends will find out who it was with. Apologize with sincerity and without caveats. And I'm sorry but, is not an apology. I'm sorry you, is likewise not an apology. Using that blames the other person. Girls, as much as you adore your boyfriend husband, you both need to have a social life apart from each other. Don't give up your friends for your relationship and don't force him to bail on his buddies because you don't want to be lonely. Girls, your boobs are alright, so stop obsessing over how small they are. Confidence in what you've got is more appealing than overall breast size. Having breasts in general is more appealing than breast size. Someone that lies cheats to get with you, will lie cheat on you as well. For both genders, really. The only acceptable time to talk to us about not being able to find someone just like us, is if you've already asked us and we've said no, or we're gay. Someone like you but like dart actually attractive. Better? Not all guys are the same. You just keep chasing the same guys. Ladies, 99% guys aren't like the guys in the movies. We aren't great at picking up subtle cues. We probably aren't going to go stand by a lake and look out while we build up the courage to race to the airport and stop your flight, or object to your wedding and take you away to a power ballad. We get drunk and beat our friends and play video games. We miss you, but this isn't a notebook or a romcom. If you're a good looking man woman people will always treat you better and life probably seems easy. Negging is kind of obvious. Only a woman with overly symmetrical eyebrows would say that. Jesus Christ, I hate that. I once had a guy sit down next to me, put his arm around my waist, and say you know, I don't care what other people say, I think you're hot. I got up and walked away. Gross. This is kind of the no good to pay fallacy. If it isn't obvious you wouldn't know it happens. Like no one has seen a good to pay because if you saw it you wouldn't know it even was fake. Same with negging. Some manipulative people are really good at it and you won't know what they are doing. The person with the least to lose always has the most control power in the relationship. Ladies. Trying to act cutesy and flirty isn't going to get me to give you a discount on your items. It wouldn't work even if I wasn't gay. And that'll be 5.99 plus 5% flirting tax. Girls, using Marilyn Monroe quotes is the worst idea on a dating profile. Ever. If you can't handle me at my spookiest, you don't deserve me at my dutiest MR. Skeletal. If you want surprise fun time, take your showers regularly. Edit, I love how my top 2 comments are about period cramps and personal hygiene. If you are not a hot girl you can't just bail on your life and set up shop in someone else's. Edit, this is a quote from Rick and Morty episode 1. In bird culture that is considered a D move. You can if you're a military spouse. Masturbation is not cheating. Fantasies dreams are not cheating. And for God's sakes, just because you had a dream where I fricked your mom in the A doesn't mean that I actually did it or would even want to. Take a compliment without a retort. Being nice isn't good enough. People are supposed to be nice. Sorry ladies, but I'm taken. Let me get Liam Neeson to help you. That outfit does make you look fat. Every outfit does. I'm a single dad. Single moms, don't say my kid is my world. Constant 1 to 3 word responses are a huge turn off. Ask us questions. Also, yes it makes your air look good, but don't wear those leggings pad things 24 stroke 7. This guy's knows online dating. 
If she writes my kid truck pet job is my world and I immediately find another profile to look at. E. While we're on the topic of dating profiles, also the haha no coffee dinner dates. That's boring come up with something exciting and memorable. But I'm not going to suggest anything because I have no freaking clue what to do either is also pretty obnoxious. And yes the truck thing is real. Alberta, Canada baby. Ladies, don't listen to that last one. Girls, you aren't a princess any more than I am a prince. I understand if you say it as a joke but not when you actually believe it. You don't have to pretend to be a princess to be treated like one. There are plenty of people out there willing to treat you like a human being that deserves respect and will do nice things for you. This also goes both ways. To quote Frank Underwood. Let me be clear, you are entitled to nothing. It's funny the girls who call themselves princesses tend to be completely devoid of princess-like qualities. No class, no manners, no poise or grace. They're usually just spoiled, entitled brats. Guys who are afraid of period X, chances are, you've probably had period X. Plenty of us aren't afraid of it. It's the ladies I've been with who rule it out. Your wife girlfriend is not your mother. Speak for yourself, city slicker. Girls, you are someone's reason to masturbate, whether you like it or not. It's bad when I'm going through my mind like a catalog oh she'll work tonight. Edit, and now my top comment is about how I frequently masturbate to my friends on Facebook. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment.